Neolim community. We're going to see how to build Twitter clone in 60 lines of Neo. This is how our final application going to look like. Also, we're going to spend a couple of seconds looking at more complicated node taking application. And after that, uh, take uh, spend some time looking at source code for our Twitter. Okay, let's start. So the Twitter is a bunch of messages. We can create a new message. We can change existing message and we can delete it. Uh, an interesting feature is that if you open another instance of your application, the change is going to be synchronized automatically among all instances and you don't need to write any specific code to do that. It just happens out of the box. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much, we, we, we just saw how our Twitter works. Now let's spend a couple of times, couple of seconds looking at more complicated note taking application. Just to so showcase what's possible to do with uh, Mono Framework. So this is a note taking application. It displays different types of content. Here, for example, we display a to-do list, kind of reminder. Uh, it has full text search, can display tables, uh, cards, has tags. Okay, let's, yeah. So this is example of cards and bunch of other features. Uh, okay, let's go back to Twitter and spend some time looking at its source code. Uh, there is uh, 60 lines of NIM and the framework, if, if you're familiar with Svelte, this framework is kind of similar. We have, uh, it, is, it is reactive, but you don't have to do anything specifically to, to make your code reactive. <laughs> so it, it, yeah, okay. So it has a model and it has a UI layer. So this, this, uh, this code is all that you need to render interactive, um, inter this interactive Twitter UI. Um, I don't want to go, to, to go deep into how exactly every line works because it would take too much time and I would like to keep this conversation short. So instead, I would suggest that we take a look at Hello World application. Let's start Hello. So it's just a input field and when you input something, it displays hello, whatever you wrote. And this is the source code for this hello application. Again, you can take a look at, your, at it yourself and run it yourself. Um, what we have here is the uh, UI component. It's called hello. And it has name, variable. And we also have render and we render HTML that has uh, one input and one uh, text, uh, span element displaying hello, hello name. Let's see, let's inspect the page. So this, what's going to be rendered? Just let's take a look again at uh, structure of our template. It has input and one uh, span element. And that's what's going to be rendered. Again, just one input. Yeah, here it is. 
as you can see when you type something in the input the HTML changed um, dynamically and very precise like the the page is not updated only the specific element that needs to be updated uh, actually updated and the interesting part that does it is this line so what we what we do here it we 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 tell that uh, content that this input shall be bind to this name variable it's very very convenient because you don't you never need to touch input it's going to be updated back and forth automatically if you change name the input going to be changed or if you change input the, its value going to be uh, uh, automatically stored in this variable and uh, this part uh, this part this element is going to be updated reactively and automatically going to be updated automatically and we don't need to write any specific callbacks events or whatever we just write a simple HTML template pretty much the same way as uh, static pretty much the same way as the static template static site would work and it just magically works as dynamic site uh, interesting feature that differs it from Carax, for example, Nim Carax framework, is that you don't have to compile it to JS. All this code run in as a in plain Nim C runtime. You don't need to compile it to JS or and download it to site. Another uh, good feature is that it's friendly to search engine because if you check source you actually see the the in initial initial page load you you're going to see the actual html for your application okay uh, that's that's all thank you